Hey everyone, so welcome to another episode of Fishing Rod. It's early April and we're getting a head start in this year's ice off season. Um, typically, the interior BC, the lakes become ice free around mid to late April. Uh, but this year, because of the warm weather that we had, we had temperature up to the low and mid 20s. Um, the, most of the lakes have been ice free for about 10 days now. So today we're fishing at the lake near Merritt. And uh, even though it's the, the, the lake has been ice free for, for about 10 days, uh, the insect hatches haven't really started yet. So we're going to be doing some bait fishing today. So we're going to be using some Pasky bait uh, single eggs. So these are the um, gold label uh, bolso fire. So the, these eggs are dyed and uh, they're covered in glitter. So hopefully they can attract lots of fish. So if you recall, last year I took Chris from Pasky Bait out fishing with me at Hicks Lake near Vancouver. Uh, even though we caught lots of fish, most of the fish were between 12 and 14 inches long, which is pretty typical for lakes in southwestern British Columbia, uh, simply because the lakes are not very productive. There simply isn't enough nutrient to support the fish's growth. So most of the fish you catch would be around a pound or less. Uh, but we do have great rainbow trout fishing lakes in, across, right across British Columbia. Uh, so what I want to do today is show Chris that we can in fact catch some big rainbow trout with Pasky Bait single eggs. So the setup that we're using today is um, fairly simple. So like I said, we're going to be using uh, single eggs. So these eggs, which you can buy at the tackle store, comes in a jar like that. And once you open them, you can pretty much use them right away. You simply take a few out and uh, thread them on a hook like so. Um, this is the size for hook I'm using today, um, which is pretty much um, all I use for trout, kokanee, and char. Um, I find that smaller hooks, the fish tend to swallow it, and this one, it's not. I don't think it's too big and because of this, uh, the size of the hook you have to put maybe uh, three to four eggs on it just to make sure the whole hook is covered except the tip of the hook and once that's done it's ready to be used um, so I'm using a sliding float rig so this sliding float here will slide up and down the main line and if you keep going up the main line there's actually float stoppers on at the very end so once this goes up and what well, the weight goes down eventually you'll reach you'll reach the uh, float stopper and then you will stay there so you want to adjust your float stopper so that um, so that's your depth so from the hook to the float stopper that's the depth that where you're fishing at we're fishing at around uh, 15 feet of water today uh, right now anyways and uh, I got my float stopper set around at around 10 feet or maybe just over that and the other one is at 12 feet just so I can play around with this you can use two rods if you're fishing by yourself on the boat um, so yeah just in, just until I can figure out exactly where the fish are biting so 10 feet and uh, you want to use this the right amount of weight to balance the float so only the top orange part will show up um, above the water so this is your strike indicator when the fish bites um, it's going to go under the water and that's when you pull the line. Um, this, these fish, these rainbow trout are pretty aggressive so when they buy it, when, when they bite it, um, it's, they, don't, they don't hesitate. Make sure your rods are um, secured. So like my, my rods are actually on these Scotty rod holders, spinning rod holders, so they won't get um, stolen by the fish. which. You see, happen from time to time when, uh, when other people lay the rods on the boat. It's great. So two rod holders set up, um, two rods. I just got my floats out there. I can sit back and watch the floats. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? When I first got here around late morning today, um, it was actually pretty windy, um, which is pretty uh, pretty common when you're fishing in an interior lake. So even though, if, even though the weather forecast says, you know, 25 degrees, make sure you bring a windproof, waterproof jacket, um, waterproof pants, um, just in case the wind's really strong. And it can be pretty cold. I mean, mind you, it's still early April. So um, yeah, that wind was pretty cold this morning. So once I got out here, I had everything, out, everything on, you know, I was 
bundled up pretty nicely. Um, so when I started fishing today, um, I had I had a fish right away, uh, surprisingly. Um, as soon as I anchored, I cast it out within a few minutes I had a fish on. And that fish actually jumped into the boat um, at the same time it snapped the line. So it had the hook dangling in the mouth and it was flopping around in the boat. So I just quickly kind of tossed it over and let it go because I didn't want to keep it. Um, so I thought, well, the fishing must be really good today, right? Well, quite the opposite. Um, the fishing has been pretty slow. Uh, I was averaging about one fish um, every hour, but the quality of the fish have been pretty good. So 16, 18 inches long have been the average size I've been getting. Um, and uh, now the wind has kind of calmed down a little bit and I'm getting more bites now, but the fish... Uh, oh, this one, this one. This one. Oh, that's a small one. Yeah, I was just going to say, look, I'm getting more bites now. The fish are smaller now, so this one's any about, oh, look at the jump. The, fi <laughs> oh, the fish are around. Look at them jump. So this is pretty, pretty typical for these um, Panas rainbow trout. They, they love to jump. I'm just going to toss the one in here. So this one's not very big. It's just a juvenile. It's probably only about, I don't know, 12 inches long, which is well, what we call a Hicks Lake. But a fish is a fish. So let's unhook this guy here. Show you that. Not very big. Just let it go so you can get a bigger one. What we want to catch is some of the um, 18 inches or even 20 inches in here. Um, still pretty early in the season. So I'm not sure if we're going to get some more. Because when the fishing is good, it can be really good. But I haven't seen that many fish jumping around yet. So one of the things that... One, well, so when I did the coconut jigging video a couple weeks ago, and one of the most common questions I got was that, well, what do you look for? What do you look for when you're out here on the lake? Oh, this bite right there. Oh, that's a bigger fish. Yep, that's an 18 incher. Well, maybe 16. I'm exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Now the fishing's good. Grab the net. Ah, oh, fish on. Okay, a bit of a mess here. Two fish in a row, so I got line everywhere. I'm gonna fix this one up. This one's got a hook in the rack. And I'm gonna bring this fish in to show it to you guys. Woo. So one of the challenges that I've had when filming by myself like this, today I'm fishing, filming by myself, um, it's really, really tough um, because the cameras are stationary. So, you know, when I catch a nice fish, I still want to show it to you guys. And if I want to release it, um, it's very hard to do both. It's very hard to accomplish both. So on one hand, if I'm leaning over the side of the boat, trying to, you know, make sure the fish is in the water because you want to do that. Um, you, want to, you want to make sure, and the number one concern that I have is that the safety of the fish. So if you jeopardize the survival of the fish, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the catch and release. And then the second thing is, on my other hand, I'm maneuvering the camera, trying to make sure to get the right shot, get the right exposure, get the right focus. And uh, it's just really hard to do both. So what I've been doing in the last couple of times is, you know, I brought this tub, I filled it with water, and uh, so this way, when I net the fish with my catch and release net, by the way, this is a really nice net. This rubber net, net made by Gibbs Garden Tackle is really nice. Um, really easy to handle the fish. The hook doesn't get into the uh, rubber mesh. So it's, it's really easy to, to, yeah, it's really easy to um, unhook the fish and everything. So once I net the fish, I'll bring the fish into the water in, in this top. So it will sit there very nicely so it doesn't get hurt. So this way I can sit back with the camera right in front of me and make sure the fish is okay and I can hold the fish up like this and show it to you guys. So that's a pretty nice fish, roughly around 16 inches long. Huh? So that's exactly what we look for. Caught on the single eggs by Posky Bait. Okay, 
So let's let it go. I'm just gonna pick it up and put it over the side of the boat. Beauty! Nice one. Whew. Now the fishing's kind of picking up. Very happy. So let's put this back. Looks like, you know, two fish in a row, so looks like they're biting. This one's already baited. I'm just gonna toss this one out now and deal with the other one. So rainbow trout are pretty aggressive. Um, it's not like a kokanee. Kokanee, when they bite, they tend to um, uh, just kind of peck at it. You, you really have to hook, set the hook at the right time. Whereas rainbow trout, when they come along and they will just snatch the bait and they don't really hesitate. And more, one, nine, times out of, nine times out of 10, um, they'll, they'll hook themselves. So again, that's why these rods are sitting in the rod holder to make sure my rods don't get pulled in the water. Oh, that's my right away. Oh no. Oh, that, that bait sat, that bait was ending the water for about five seconds. <laughs> that's the bait still on there. Toss it out. This one's gone now. Yeah, there it is. Ugh. That's it. Ah, that's a little guy. Just a little guy. This one is gonna get a bite in a minute. This is what I call a feeding frenzy. It's gonna let this one go over the side of the boat. Without... And the loon's showing up behind me. <laughs> it's a party. Whoa, this one. <laughs> That's a nice one. Whoa. They fight well, they dive well, and they, they jump well as well. This one's about the same size as the one I took it out. Oh, there's a loon trying to catch the fish. There it is. I'll just let it go on the side of the boat without bringing this one in. We don't need to show this one as well. Oh, hooks out. Off it goes, without even touching the fish. Oh, there's a fish on this one. <laughs> that's kind of weird. What happened there? Oh, it's a trout. Oh, that's weird. I floated and moved. No wonder I was not getting bites because there's a fish on there. Let's take a look. <laughs> that was very strange. So this one's um, not as big as the one I brought into the top before. But let's take a look at it anyways. There. It's uh, not, not that big really. But still a good fish. It's gonna bring it over to the side of the boat and let it go. There he goes. Ah. So that's about it for today. And uh, it's been a pretty enjoyable day. I got here around 11 o'clock this morning. And uh, the first few hours, it was kind of windy, kind of cold. The fishing was pretty slow. I was averaging about one fish every hour. So I was feeling a little miserable. But then when the, well, the wind kind of went away for a little bit and lake got flat, uh, the fishing really picked up, as you can see. It was kind of like a feeding frenzy out there. And uh, yeah, so, but that's how fishing is usually, isn't it? I mean, you know, you, you have some, most of the time it's kind of low and you know you got to look for the fish and uh then occasionally you get these highs you know catch you, you catch quite a few fish and that's kind of what brings us back every time right so it's about six o'clock in the afternoon now the wind has kind of picked up again you can see the the, the boat's kind of bouncing a little bit so i'm gonna pack it up and head home and have dinner and uh it's like i say it's uh if you want to do some lake fishing don't just try trolling and don't just if you don't fly fish if you don't lure fish um, definitely anchor up get yourself some anchors and anchor up at places where you think the fish are traveling and feeding um, and get yourself some 
single eggs like that. Pellets get baked single eggs and uh, put them under the float and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. There are over 800 lakes right across British Columbia where you can do this kind of fishing. Um, so all you got to do is buy a freshwater fishing license and uh, get outside and uh, catch some nice rainbow trout. So if you need more fishing information in British Columbia, be sure to check out our website at fishingrod.com. And if you can't find anything, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. You can email us at info at or um, leave a message in this video or message us on Facebook or Instagram. And I'm um, always there to answer your questions. So, um, and also, oh yeah, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm always gonna be putting out videos. So there'll be many more videos coming out in 2016. And uh, until next time, good luck fishing.